Oh snap. Oh, it's pulling. Oh snap. Flag your tail bottom. One more fish. Fish. Oh, I'm on too. It's always double hug up. You got a mutton? Oh yeah, good job. What? It's mutton day, man. This is incredible. That box is full of fish. Beauties, look at that. While heading offshore, my fuel filter stopped working. The engine could not get fuel and shut off. Luckily, we were able to float with the wind into the John Penny Camp State Park. <laughs> I need the world to know what we've done to this fuel filter. The threads on the fuel filter had rusted through and we could not get the darn thing to come off. And it still doesn't wanna come off. We're working on it. And oh. we did it. We did it. <laughs> I'm really... Oh my god. I'm not sure. But with a little duct tape, we should be able to just kind of just tape this up and put it back on. I don't think I think should so. be no problem. We'll be fine. Yeah, this is gonna work. We can go 25 miles offshore with that. No problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Good to go. All right. So which one of us is going to run to West Marine? <laughs> Let's see. You got shoes on. We don't have a car, so I think we're going for a run. <laughs> or I'm going for a run. They told me it was only a mile away. I swear I've been running for about two miles already. It's way... I don't even see it yet. Because I want to catch a mutton snapper. And ain't nothing going to get in my way. Not today. Me. They did me at the dock. This is way further than a mile. Oh, oh. I made it. Uh, note to self, West Marine does not sell refreshments. But I got two new oh, fuel filters. I got about probably like I'd say it's like 1.78 mile run to get here, so here I go. Got my baggie. Making my way downtown. No, 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 no. Hey, who did you? Dude. Damn, that was awesome, man. That was about it only being a mile away. A little more than a mile away. Yeah, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. Especially when you're under the sun. I bought two because I ain't messing around. That's a good idea. This is what they're supposed to look like. Here we go. Lots of fish. Bermuda chubs. And then there's something else down there though. Dude, those are yellowtail. Those are. We have a yellowtail jig set up? I kind of do. Holy smokes. So the only bait we have right now is, is um, Bonito. Yeah, yellowtail will eat that. One of us needs to handle bait and one of us needs to handle yellowtail or whatever fishing. I'll just get some rods ready and I'll start cutting some bait chunks. The bally who are here, the yellowtail are down. They, they went down though. They swam to the bottom, I think. I'm just gonna send out a little weighted jig. Not ideal for yellowtail, but a little bigger than a normal yellowtail jig. It's uh, half an ounce, but we'll see what 
if we can get out of it. I got, oh, it came off, oh! It was good, whatever it was. You got two in there? Nice, I'll move this rod a bit. Oh yeah! Dude, the yellowtail are on fire, baby! We're gonna limit out on yay yellowtail before the day even begins. Oh no, he got up! There's so many yellowtail down there. They keep getting off. I think this hook is, the hook's too big. I gotta use one of those small yellowtail hooks. All right, Dan, I got you a full shot here. With, full shot? With the belly hoop net. The pressure is on. Feel the pressure, man. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's get a junior and his belly hoop. There we got a bunch. Whereas this would take an hour or more in the old days. Bingo. Well, we are here in Key Largo and we are currently catching some ballyhoo. We got Dan from Florida Fishing Couple behind the camera. Ballyhoo are here, so we got plenty of bait. The main goal is we got yellowtail behind the boat, but that's not what we came here for. We're about to run offshore, troll a little bit, and then deep drop, hopefully catch a big mutton or a big grouper. So let's see what we get on today. All right, I have switched to a, a real yellowtail hook. I'm just gonna lightly tip it with a piece of ballyhoo. Wow, look at all the yellowtail. There's your jack, right there. Yeah. I got, got I got him. the yellow jack. Got him. <laughs> yes. Get him up here. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, sashimi, come here. <laughs> yeah, where's the net? Oh snap. Oh, he's gonna get himself. Oh, he got himself around my line. Is that net stuck down there? Damn it! I should have just whipped him in the boat. What was I? What was I doing? No, but he is fully wrapped around all my gear. Oh, there he is. I got him. Got him? Yeah. All right. Nice he day. went right for it. Sashimi on the boat. And we haven't even started yet, really. No, we haven't even started. That's a nice fish, too. Good job. Came out of nowhere. On the little yellow tail hook. Awesome. Gotta make sure that we bleed him out. Yeah, he wanted it. All right, he's bleeding out. We're gonna have a real nice white sashimi meat with this guy. Woo! The old tail. He's a, he's a, huh? He's big enough. Keeper. Wow, this yellow tail really bled out nicely. It's like dark red water now. He has moved on. Oh, another yellow tail. He's a little small. Oh, baby yellowtail. Feels okay. Eh, no, he's small. He's probably legal, but I don't know. I think that's all we need. We are yeah, good to go. Ooh. Oh, another yellowtail. Oh, man down, man down. Watch, this is how. You unhook them without even touching them. Ready? Just like that. I'm surprised there's not a, oh, there he goes. I meant to do that. Yeah, there's a color change up here. I say we troll it. Yeehaw, the color change is beautiful. Got the little nose spring on there. Double hook. Go, Dan. 
Yeah. Weedless squid rig number two. I had a whole bag of weedless squid rigs that I made that I didn't bring. A whole bag of them. I spent so much time making those that I'm like, oh, Dan's gonna be impressed when I whip this bag out. We troll for a couple hours with a few small strikes, but the bite seemed off. So we moved closer inshore into 130 feet to do some bottom drifting off the reef's edge. This looks like a drifting bottom. I don't know how much longer we should troll for. Yeah, let's, let's do it. So we at least have some time to bottom fish. Dang it, I, I had high hopes for uh, trolling. I'm going to butterfly a ballyhoo for my bait. There's one alive in there. Cut the rib out. Butterfly belly hood. All right, Valley who going out. I gotta wait. Coming. I am going. I'm going to use a ten ounce weight. Oh, no, I think it got off. I think it got off. Oh, yeah. It, whatever it was, it pr pretty much ate it all. You know what? I am going to put on... Yeah, good idea. I'm going to put on a strip of Bonito. You want some sushi, Dan? Yeah, right? Well, it just doesn't look like sunny though. Just give me a chunk. Yeah. Give me a big hunk of that. Big old hunk. Yeah, he ain't like a piece of steak. There we go. I feel good about that. That right there. Yeah, Come on, grouper. Down goes the Bonito strip. How can I, not be on? I I think it might still I think it's on there. It's on there. Maybe. Oh yeah! Woo! You won! The main thing is the clicker's off. Yeah, the clicker's off. We're gonna get only thumbs up on this video. He looks good. He looks pretty, 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 pretty. Mutton, baby, mutton, mutton, legal. Welcome home, baby. <laughs> Man, I love those mutton snappers. I know they're so pretty. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And salad. He had salad also. Look at this, man. Woo! -hoo. He swallowed it the whole damn thing. There was a trouble hook down. That was a place. full belly who, right? Look what he's got in his mouth. What what's he what's got he's got? There? What's he got in there? He's got a crab. Oh wait, I, I need to get this. This is. Look at that. What's he got in his mouth? He's got a crab in his mouth. Huh. There's a, a crab in there. All right, let's get this hook out, and I'm gonna get that crab out. Where's your D hooker? Oh yeah, there was a crab. Yep, a whole little crab. I don't think he's alive. But let's see you hold up that sweet, succulent <laughs> piece of meat. <laughs> I love when you talk to me dirty like that. <laughs> Woo! I don't think there's a problem with your weight size. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs>
Okay, my last strip was stolen, but I got a new one on. Looking good and setting it down. Just go for it, just swallow it. Out. It's it, it might be on there. It might, it might be. you might be hooked up. You could start reeling it in, I think. Oh, look at him go! Oh yeah! <laughs> Ooh, that's got a bend to it. Money shot! Oh! Oh wait a minute! Turn that clicker off. Yeah, turn that clicker off. That should be like on the back of your shirt. Turn that clicker off. Follow me. I always turn my clicker off. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh! Yep. Spot saved. Oh yeah! Ah <laughs> yeah! Woo! Mine feels kind of good. I'm not gonna lie. You got a mutton over there? Oh, you got a pretty mutton. Oh! Flag yellow tail, and you got a mutton. Woo! That's a big yellow tail. That is a big yellow tail. That's a good looking mutton you got there. On a on a butterfly ballyhoo. On your butterfly ballyhoo. Yep. Beautiful. And I got I got a bonita strip. Oh no kidding, you got them on a bonita strip. On the That's bonita great. strip. The yellow tail can't resist. Excellent. Good, good to know. Alright, settle down there, buddy. We bleed our fish because we're professionals. Like bloody fillets as well. Where's your little uh, straightener out? Another bonita strip. Bonito going down. I'm gonna do a little size comparison here. All right, here's a legal yellowtail, and here's the one I just caught. This is why we left the yellowtail at the other spot to go find the bigger ones. They're both going to taste great in the ice box with you, baby. Yeah. yeah that's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's pulling. Oh, shh. Honeysuckles. It's got a good bite to it. Okay, weight's off. We're good. Probably the biggest yellow tail I ever done see. Holy flag smokes! Flag That's a flag. Holy smokes! That's an absolute beauty, man. That's holy smotherings! All right, I named this spot Flag Yellow Tail Bottom. Enter. Yeah, good idea. Monster. Drift number two, drop number one. Here we go. Whenever I toss my, my bait out and it's like just sitting out there, I'm always hoping like a kingfish swims by and grabs it. I'm just like getting my weight ready and then all of a sudden, Wee -de 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 -de. Oh yeah. Hey, it feels, feels good. Come to daddy! Get this skillet hot! It's game time! Oh! Another flag yellowtail! Whack! They love that bonito. They can't they can't resist it. That's what it, the bait looks like. Well I got the net, so you know, if it's a big mutton again. It's probably gonna be a mutton because you've been catching all the muttons. I've been getting all the yellow tails. I wonder if we switched our baits up. If I use Ballyhoo and use use Benito, if it was if it'd still be the same. Get rid of that sinker and back. All to right. Station. Oh yeah. 
If it's still fighting at the top, could be a nice yellowtail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blue oh, Runner. Get out of here. What? Blue Runner. Blue Runner? What did you do to my bait? Oh, man. You destroyed my bait. Strong fighter. He was a strong fighter. Send him right back down yeah, on the stinger. Right <laughs> One more fish, another fish. Fish for the box, please. Fish, oh, I'm on too. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's always double hookups. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm on. Oh, this one took drag on me. That's the first one that's taken drag. Yes. Oh yeah, this one's good. I got him off the bottom. Holy smokes. It's got to be a big yellowtail if it's still fighting up there on the top. You got a mutton? Oh, yeah, good job. What? Or no, it's a, a trigger. Or a trigger fish. No, you got a trigger. Can, look how fat his it's stomach is. Trigger, That's man. a fat one. It's a queen trigger, I think they're called. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. So this guy was like, in fact, he asked me the other day. He goes, hey, did you uh, try the trigger thing yet? I go, I haven't had a chance. All right, it's locked in. And then you just take this and just go, boink, it comes right down. But other than that, like now, I you can't, can't, you cannot fold that. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, stiff? Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's not going. Yeah, but then you just touch that and it goes right down. Look how fat his tummy is. No, that's a, that's a big boy. Look at those eyes. That's a beautiful fish. Oh, he's making noise. Another nice mutton you got there. Yeah, it's mutton day, man. This is incredible. Great Monday. We wanted that Ballyhoo real bad. Oh man, he still wants it. Just want to say for the record. Yeah, baby. That box is full of fish. Got bananas in the We took up our lines. We got, well, Dan got three muttons. I got a bunch of nice flag yellowtail. Our box is full. We're about to do a great catch and cook. And now we're just gonna ride into the sunset and enjoy the rest of our day. Into the sunset. mistook for a mutton he's so big <laughs> this one <laughs> yeah he looks like a mutton he's, he's a monster fat. man he i mean look he's he's <laughs> he wanted to be a mutton when he grew up mm -hmm. <laughs> one day i'll be a mutton dad. i will be a mutton well good morning there it is the next day the fish have been on ice all night dan took some fish last night he left me with a mutton i still have my yellowtail snapper and I have kind of a special recipe that I've been wanting to do, and that is fish soup. One thing I like about fish soup is that I can get the fillets off the fish and eat the fillets, and then I keep the ribs, which normally I would toss in the water and let the blue crabs eat, but I keep those ribs and I put them in a big pot. I'm gonna boil them with some carrots, garlic, and a whole bunch of other things. A nice warm soup is great after a long day of fishing. Which reminds me, I haven't even had breakfast or coffee this morning, so I may be a little cranky. Beauties, look at that. Look at this guy. 
So filleting them is going to be really simple. I'm just basically going to take my knife and I can pretty much just run it along there, along the back. One. That's it. So he's, I'm not gonna put him in the soup. I'm gonna feed him to the blue crabs because I'm trying to get those blue crabs fat. There's a whole bunch under the dock and they love it when I throw fish down there. And there's gonna be a blue crab catch and cook coming up real soon. I'm gonna do the same exact thing to the bigger yellow tail, basically just cutting at their tail and run your knife along their back. There you have it, nice fillet. Pretty much got all the meat off, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be using this in the soup. There we go. Now this is the part we're gonna be putting in the soup. I'm actually, the head is a great juicy part to put in the soup, but I'm gonna feed him to the blue crabs because I do want them to get freaking fat. I'm also going to cut the tail off of this because the tail is just not gonna fit in my pot. And there we have it. This is going to go in the soup along with the other ones. All right guys, so what we have here are some fresh ingredients to make a fish broth with and then we're gonna take that fish broth and make a nice vegetable fish soup. I ended up keeping the mutton snapper head because it was just so juicy and full of meat I couldn't get myself to throw it back in the water. And basically what I'm gonna do with those ribs is I'm gonna put boil them in water with a little bit of seasoning and get all the meat to fall off those bones and create kind of a fish broth. Then I'm gonna remove the fish bones from that soup and add the rest of the ingredients. Before I add the rest of the ingredients, like the potatoes and the carrots and the onions, I'm gonna saute them a bit in a pan and get them a little browned and caramelized. Then I'm gonna throw all that into the fish stock. I think I'm gonna add the two mutton snapper fillets also into this soup just to give it a little more hearty protein. The water is boiling, it's about Right there, that's about how much water's in here, so let's add the fish. Start with the head, juicy head. I, um, I took the gills out. You want to take the gills out because the gills can leave a weird taste in the water. So I ripped those out, I ripped all the guts out. See, there's a bunch of meat right up here in the head. There's some good juicy meat in there. Go ahead and plop them in. And then these are the ribs. Go ahead and plop all these in. It's been boiling for maybe six minutes already. I put a tiny bit of Cajuning season on there. It's looking good though. Oh yeah, it's just starting to fall apart. Now we're gonna slice and dice carrots, garlic, potatoes, and onion. We're gonna caramelize them in a pan and then throw them into the stew. <sighs> All right, guys. The onions are cut. I gotta hire someone to do that next time. Oh. Apparently, I, I'm pretty vulnerable to onions. 
Onions chopped, garlic is diced, Every, yeah, potatoes are chopped too. They're all chopped up. So I'll throw that in this pan that I got nice and hot with uh, some olive oil. Don't think this pan is big enough. You know, they're, they're not caramelized because it's kind of moist in there and not really hot enough. The problem with this stove is when I have both burners turned on, not enough electricity goes to both of them. So they don't, it doesn't really get that hot. See, it's on max temperature and it's barely boiling. But sometimes you just gotta work with what you got. Yep, that's how they come out. Right there. That is the head of the mutton snapper. You can tell it's pretty much just bone now. All the meat came off of the head. There's so many ribs inside of it, I'm like, I have to strain this, so I'm gonna strain it. That's just a whole bunch of bones. I don't know if you can tell, but there's tons and tons of ribs in there. This is a nice fish broth here. Here's the problem. There's a lot of meat in there, but if you look, it's like, it's just littered with bones. There must be a hundred little riblets in there. There's some big bones, some little bones. And I know if I put this into the fish broth, it would be very not enjoyable for anybody to eat because you'd be picking your teeth the whole time. So I'm just gonna use the fish broth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the mutton fillets inside of here. This is gonna feed the blue crabs. Actually, I think I'm just gonna throw this in, in my chum box. You put this on the patch reefs, oh man, that is gonna bring in the big boys. So this would just be way too unenjoyable to eat, but this is where the real magic lies because here we have all that fish flavor. Oh, I think it's called gelatin or something. I don't know, It's it, this is very nutritious. All the things that came out of the bones, the spine, the meat, this is just the head. This is just super nutritious, super flavorful, and it's the perfect broth. So let's just make the freaking soup. I'm gonna pour the fish broth back into the pot. Then I'm gonna add all of these delicious vegetables. Oh, it did caramelize a little bit down there on the bottom. Nice. That's good. That's gonna help the flavor. I also have these sinfully sweet. Uh, don't know what the sinfully part means, but all right. And uh, I'll just be pl I'll plop all these tomatoes in there. What's gonna happen is as these tomatoes get nice and hot, they're gonna basically explode and all those tomato juices are gonna go right into the soup. One great thing about tomato is it kind of neutralizes the taste of fish. Uh, not, not so much neutralizes it, but if there's any kind of like oily fishy taste, it really helps um, bring it down to a very mellow fish flavor. So I highly suggest um, using some kind of tomatoes in a fish soup kind of recipe if if you have someone in your family that's not a huge fish fan. And then also we're going to add this can of tomato puree, but I don't have a can opener. Hmm. Here are the two uh, mutton snapper fillets that I am going to cook just a little bit in this pan. That way I'm gonna add this fish into the fish soup afterwards. Okay, well, while that fish cooks, I'm gonna try to open this with a spoon. Is it possible? I don't know. I don't freaking know. Someone told me before you can open a can with a spoon. Not sure if they're being serious or not. Maybe if I put enough pressure on the spoon. Basically, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is rub, rub this spoon along the metal here until the metal gets thin and pops through. I don't know if I'm being crazy or not though. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Check it out, it actually punctured a little hole into it. Wait, can you see the hole? It's right there. Oh my God, the hole's getting bigger. I'm doing it. Check it out. Okay, now I'm getting tomato juice on everything. Come on, I just wanna get in there. 
Well, it's not a big hole, but I think it'll be. I think it'll do the trick. Yeah, baby. And there you have it, an empty can, nothing left in it. Boom. Don't ever let anything stop you from doing what you want to do. All right, this fish looks fine, so I will plop it in. It's going to end up breaking apart and flaking apart anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We'll keep cooking in there a little bit. I also have some parsley here, so I'm just going to kind of grab some and chuck it on in there. That'll add some more flavor while it's cooking. We can also garnish it with parsley once it's done. All right, I'm so hungry. I cannot wait any longer to eat fish. So while that fish soup is cooking, this is the yellow jack that I caught. And despite it being called a jack, it is a great eating fish. Actually, one of my favorite uh, fish for sashimi. So what I'm gonna do with this filet is kinda just cut out the center of it because there's the bloodline and also ribs. So both these pieces look great. Bones have been removed. I will just cut myself off a sliver. Got some soy sauce in here. Mmm. Wow, this is such a good um, sashimi. I'm probably gonna end up eating this whole thing. What else am I supposed to do while that cooks? You can see the tomatoes bulging up. That means they're about to explode. This one's already rolling over. This one over here already exploded. You can see the the skin of it came off. And what's going to happen is it's, it's going to kind of just disintegrate, become part of this soup full of flavor. Let's do a little taste test to see if we're missing salt or anything. Wow. Ooh. Mmm. Mm, I don't think that's missing anything. Mmm. You're good the way you are, sunshine. Don't ever change. Don't ever change. Now, I don't have a ladle. I need to go on like a cooking supply run. But, uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna use a, <laughs> this as a ladle. Wow, look at that. Hold up, look at that. Well, welcome to my rigging station. I got a fish arrow. I have wind on leader, deep drop rigs. This actually reminds me, if you want to see all of the rigs that I use offshore and you want to get some of my rigs, go to SouthFloridaFishingChannel.com and check it out. I've been working hard on creating the best designs, working with captains to make sure that we get rigs made that catch fish. Hassle-free rigs is our goal, but enough about rigs. Rigs catch the fish, but let's eat the fish. So it smells good. I already tried it. I know it tastes good, but I didn't actually try the fish. So here's a nice piece of fish. I'll give that a taste. Now, if you're watching this video and you're up north somewhere in really cold weather, I feel bad for you. This would be like the perfect thing to eat after snowboarding all day or just when you're trying to relax. It's so warm and heartful and hard tea. And I bet some sour cream in this would be really good. Maybe like a baguette or some, some bread maybe. Ooh, that would be good. I got a little bit of parsley in there. Delicious. The carrots, perfect. The Potatoes came out good. That makes me happy because sometimes I overcook potatoes, but I'm getting better. When you overcook potatoes, they are like a little mushy. When you undercook them, they're like hard. So you gotta, you gotta time it perfectly. If you ever put potatoes in a slow cooker, they usually come out a little mushy if you leave them in there for like eight hours. 
but all this came out great. You can kind of taste the caramelized onions in there a bit. I'm gonna eat some more of this fish. This is the mutton snapper. It's just so flavorful. It's the tomato really ties everything together, I think, very well. I'm happy. I'm so happy right now. I I probably should have cleaned this table, but but this is reality. I'm surrounded by fishing gear everywhere. I got like 20 rods over there. I got gaffs over here and more fishing rods. I got my bow down there. Wow, man, it's so hot, but so good. Tomorrow at six in the morning, I am going offshore. Oh, this light wasn't even pointing at me. I forgot to point my studio lights at me. Let's see if it makes a difference. There, is that better lighting? Oh man, how did I mess that up? So six in the morning tomorrow, I am going offshore and I'm going to look for the Mahi Mahi. If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like button. I post at least one video a week. I'm trying to post two videos a week, but sometimes life can hit you like a brick wall and it's a little hard to get around to it because it takes me about eight hours per video. But anyways, thanks everybody for watching. Have a good day and cheers. Oh.